What was the quickest spell you faced? Uh, the quickest uh, was uh, Jeff Thompson. Uh, and we dismissed Australia for batting first at Sydney. Australia had won the toss. And uh, we dismissed them for something like 140 or thereabouts. And you know what, what happens when, when the toss is won by the captain. The fast bowlers are only in their track suits for the whole day. They're not supposed to be in their whites. But here, Tomo was in, in his whites even before tea. And it had just started to drizzle where the umpires don't take you off the field. <laughs> but it just freshened up the pitch. Man, he was something. He was, he was not happy about bowling at that stage. Then what had happened was... My, my opening partner, Chetan Chauhan, who sadly is no more, passed away due to COVID last year. Um, he used to play this big slash outside the off stump. So if it went off the middle, it went like a rocket pass point. Or at Tomo's space, if he got the edge, it went over the slips for a boundary. And the team was teasing him about it. The team would say to him, Master, you know, you just slash him, you know. And so he played that, that shot of Tomo. And Tomo was really firing. So it went off the top edge. And it uh, one bounce on, into the boundary, and at Sydney, the the visitors' change room is closer to the action than the uh, home team's change room. And the guys sitting outside, all of them, you know, got up and said, "Master!" They shouted, and we could hear it in the middle. That master. So Chetan, re rec recognizing that you know the, these guys are making fun, started to you know shake his head and laugh. But as he laughed, he made eye contact with Tomo <laughs> in his follow through. And Tomo thought that he was laughing Love at him. him. So he went across, and he, you know, uh, he went across, and he marked a cross on on Chetan's helmet. He said, "I'm going to hit you there. I'm, I'm, I'm censoring the language. He said, I'm going to hit you there, and then I want to see you laugh." And so Chetan said, "Huh?" So he said, "Yeah, you do what you want, you know." And I'm from the non-strikers and walking in and trying to say to Chetan, "Chetan, leave it." Chetan, don't, <laughs> don't annoy him more. Than don't, we don't, need. Annoy, don't annoy him more. And Chetan, Chetan saying no. And then I said, I'm speaking to him in Marathi. And Chetan telling me, I'm a Rajput. I don't take a backward step. I will fight. And after that, man, he was bowling like, like the wind. The ball, everything was flying around right. there. Unbelievable. That's, That's the fastest, fastest right. spell I've done. Right. That's, that is interesting because you, 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 there's a clear gap there, isn't there, even between Holding and Roberts and com company. The, 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 the gully fielder was almost on that 30-meter you know, line. If you had an imaginary 30-meter, yeah. he was that deep. The slips were that deep. He yeah. bounced one and it used to go virtually, literally... You know, one bounce into the uh, yeah. <laughs> into the side screen. The English uh, batsman Keith Fletcher in 1974-5 in Australia ducked into a bouncer, just was stuck here and just literally did that with his head, and it hit him full on the English badge, and he was caught off the badge at cover point. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. like, you know, 30 metres away. <laughs> out of court. Not out, of course. Um, OK, so Mitchell Johnson, the quickest bowler. But in, in, in all the tactical challenges you've had for your technique as a batsman, who has provided the most? For me, it was Mohammed Asif from Pakistan. Oh, beautiful uh, control. I yeah. felt he was just a magician with the ball. I couldn't tell any difference in his hand uh, in the release of the ball, whether it was going away or going in. He managed to shape it in the air if there was shape in the air. And if there was no shape in the air, he could nip the ball and it felt like he was nipping it as well. So I'd leave a ball, nip back, clip the off stump, up there a ball, nip away, <laughs> find the edge. To describe to viewers who don't remember Mohammed Asif, not unlike Vernon, in, in length, pace, an ability just to make the ball talk Absolutely. near you. If there was anything in the air or in the wicket for assistance to the bowlers, Mohamed Asif and Enric Vernon would get it. Um, yeah. He was a slightly taller than, than Vern, so he, he was always, it always felt like there was a little bit more bounce, uh, but he was just a beautiful bowler to watch and not so nice to face. No, I'm sure. And your technical challenge, anybody out with you? Anyone get Andy, you? Andy Roberts, all the time. You know, because with Andy... Like I said, with the new ball, you're expected, you know, I mean, they're expected to get you out. But with Andy, even if you're past 100, you know, he had that ball that could get you out. And, you know, his bouncer was always, always at you. He could be bowling, you know, the perhaps the final over of the day. And the bouncer would still be as searingly fast as the first over's bouncer. Okay. 
Where are we with Test cricket, guys? It's, it's dear to our hearts. Uh, lovers of Test cricket do feel that Test cricket is presently a bit compromised. Um, what do you think? I think certain countries have maintained that respect and that uh, awe of Test cricket. Countries like Australia, England, India, um, for whatever reason, they have managed to maintain that and you see that with the crowd attendance obviously with the COVID regulations and things like that you can't really tell in, in South Africa um, I think it's healthy though because there, there is still a market for that purist who appreciates the hard work the thousands of cricket balls that get hit in the nets and to see that battle hardened face of a batsman or a bowler or the sweat I think there's a market for that and I think there'll always be one